All right, in this video, we're going to do transformation of functions. We're going to talk about horizontal shifts, stretches, horizontal stretches, reflections, vertical stretches, vertical shifts, even and odd functions, and a combination of all of these together. So we're going to start off with horizontal. So the horizontal stretching, we're going to look at this function. It's the one of your toolbox functions, absolute value of x. We're going to do a a shift horizontally, left or right. That's when we add a constant to the function inside the function itself. So in this case, the absolute value of x, we would add inside uh, 2, x plus 2, or we'd subtract inside x minus 3. Now these things shift the graph right or left. Now x plus 2 shifts it left 2 units. So that would take the screen graph and shift it to here, starting at this point and going up. So that would be this value. This part right here would be shifted over 2. And this part over here would be shifted over 2 as well, this direction. So when x plus 2 shifts left 2 units. Okay, now on x minus 3, we take that graph and shift it right 3 units. So we would move over here, 1, 2, 3, and we would have the same shifting the green graph 3 units that way. We would end up with a function that looks like that, and this would be h of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Okay, so that's a shift left or right. We would add or subtract a constant. Now, the next horizontal part is stretching and shrinking. So horizontal stretches and shrinks move the graph inward towards the y-axis or outward away from the y-axis. And that's done by having it constant multiplied inside the function. So horizontal is always done inside the function. So in this graph, we're going to take this original green <coughs> graph, and we're going to put a 3x inside the function, multiply by 3. This is actually a compression by a factor of 3. So we're compressing this graph by a factor of 3, so we're shifting this over 3 units. So if we wanted to move this 1, it would move over to 1 third here. 0 doesn't get compressed, it's already on the axis. Uh, this 2 would go to 2 thirds. <coughs> this 3 would go to 1. It would compress the function down to this part right here. So you'd move this 3 value here over compressing it by 1 third. And you do the same thing on the other side, it would look like this. It gets compressed towards the y-axis. So the 3 in there compresses it by a factor of 3. Now if we put a 1 half in there instead of a 3, that would be stretching it. Stretching it by a factor of 3, or of 2. So... because it's a reciprocal of this number. Reciprocal, so we would take this green graph and we stretch it out. So instead of being one away here, we go out to two away. And here is two away, we go out one to four away. So it would stretch out by a factor of two. And it would be this way on both sides. Two, four. So it would look like that. That would be the absolute value of one half of x graph. So this stretches it if it's less than one. If it's greater than one, it compresses it. So that's the horizontal compression and stretching. Now reflections happen when you change the sign on the function. 
So we're going to look at that down here on this F, our square root function. We're going to look at changing the sign inside and changing that sign outside this function. So if you change it on the inside of the function, you do one reflection and you change it on the outside, you do a different reflection. <coughs> so this one reflects on the y-axis. Reflect on y-axis. And this one reflects, if it's on the outside, reflects on x-axis. So inside it reflects on the y, so it takes this graph and it flips it over this way. So this one right here, 4, be 4 here, and it would go like this, a reflection. This would be square root of negative x. Whereas this one here <laughs> reflects on the x-axis, so it would reflect down to here down to here. So this would be the graph negative square root of x. So that's reflecting. So that's what that does when we change the sign. Okay, now so we've done horizontal, horizontal reflections. Okay, we're going to move on to vertical stretches. So vertical stretches and compressions, a vertical shift. We're going to change functions. Now the toolbox functions we're going to use are x cubed and x squared. So anytime we do that, a vertical stretch or shrink is going to happen. Stretch or compression is going to happen when we put a number on the outside of the function, not inside. Horizontal is inside, vertical is outside. So if we put it on the outside, we multiply by it one half. So on this one, Example, putting a one half is for a. We're going to vertically compress, so this compresses by a factor of one half. So that means that um, this graph, when we were here at one, would compress down to one half. When we're here at eight, that's what happens too, it goes to 8, we compress that down to half, so it would go down to 4 right here. So we're compressing it down towards the x-axis. And it would do the same here, we'd have a half right there instead of 1, negative 1. And negative 8, we'd go down to negative 4 right here, so it compresses it towards the x-axis. So in a compression vertically, this is uh, towards x-axis. Whereas when we were doing the previous one, this is this compression is towards y-axis. Okay, so now a vertical, okay, so we're moving on to this 2 here. The 2 actually stretches by a factor of 2. So that means this 1 right here would go up to 2. This 8 would go way up here at 16, so we'd have 2, 16 as a point up there. And it would go up quicker, much quicker than the other one is. And then we do the same thing here. We go down to negative 2, and this would be down to negative 16 at, at negative 2. So this would travel down to 2, negative 2, negative 16. All right, so it stretches it away from the x-axis, towards or away from the x-axis. Now if we're going to do a shift vertical, up or down, we just pick up, the, we just add a constant to the end, all right? And we're going to look at x squareds here for this. So. We're going to look at this function. We're going to shift it vertically. So the minus 3 would be, mean it shifts down 3 units vertically. So this function would, this would go down to negative 3. This one would go down to negative 2. This would go down to negative 2. 
This can go down three units to one. Four up here goes down to one. So the function looks like this. When we do the x squared minus three. Okay, and this means this plus one at the end would be up one unit vertically. So it would shift this green graph to here. Instead of at one, we'd be at two. Instead of four, we'd be at five. So this graph right here represents x squared plus one. All right. Now, um, so we've talked about horizontal, vertical, and now we just need to do even and odd, and we need to do combinations, which is putting them all together. So even and odd functions, we've done all of these functions here that are toolbox functions are either um, even or odd. Now. Up to this point, we've done even and odd. So even functions are when we have a function where we put in an opposite value and we get the original, it's the same as the original value. So an example of that would be this function right here, f of x equals x squared. It's an even function because if we went and did negative x int for this x value, we would put it into the function like this you'd square it and you get back the original function. So these are the same. This one is the same. That's what it's saying here. Negative x gives you the same as the original. They're the same. So that means it's even. It also has y-axis symmetry and that means it folds along the y-axis. So this one is even because you can fold it right along this axis. If we go back to the other functions, this green function, the absolute value, even we can fold it along the axis. This is neither because you can't fold along the axis. Okay, the odd functions are when you put in a negative x and you get the opposite answer back and it has a rotational symmetry around the origin. That's this function right here, x cubed. x cubed is odd because if I put in the function f of negative x into the thing and we cube negative x, that would be negative x times negative x times negative x, you just get negative x cubed, which is the same as f of x times negative 1, which is what this is saying here. So if you take and multiply by negative 1 here, and you get the same as putting in a negative x, then it's got odd. It's an odd function. So x cubed is an odd function. And now if neither one of those happens, then it's neither. So none of these functions that we changed are either even or odd because we've moved them. This is neither even or odd. So some functions are neither. All right, well, we're going down to the last one. Last one. We're going to do a combination. So I've done four different things in this combination. So when you order matters in this type of problem, we have to work our way out just like we were solving the problem. So we do this part first because that's the first part. If we put a number in for x, we would subtract 2 from it first. So that would be our first step. And that is a shift horizontally. by two units and it's negative so that means it goes the opposite direction so it's right two units okay so this right here would shift it over to here one one okay then we have four one two so it goes there so this would be the function square root of x minus 2. Now the second thing we do after that is or is 
do this 3 out in front because we multiply. This is the last thing we do. The last thing we do is add. So in this next step, we're going to do this. Now there's two things here. We're multiplying by 3, and we're changing the sign. There's actually two things here. There's a reflection on x-axis from the negative sign, and we're also doing a vertical stretch by 3, 3 factor of 3. So we can do either one first here because this is commutative property. We can do multiply by negative 1 or multiply by 3 first. So either one of those steps can be in either order. So I'm going to reflect first. So reflect here goes this way. Okay, and then I'm going to do a stretch, put that in uh, purple, uh, red. We're going to do the vertical stretch in red. So instead of stretching away from the x-axis because it's vertical, so uh, by a factor of 3, this doesn't get stretched. But this 1 gets stretched away by a factor of 3. This 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 times 3 is 6. So this goes like this. This would be, um, up to this point, this would be negative 3 square root of x minus 2. Now this right here, the last step of this is to move it shift up 1. That's the last thing we do. It's important that the shift up or down is done last. If not, we may reflect it first and come up with the wrong answer. So we're going to shift it up one, goes to here. Shift it up one, goes to here. Shift it up one, goes to here. We're doing reference points of where I graphed it before. So this is the graph of the whole thing. So the black graph is negative. 3 square root of x minus 2 plus 1. That's what h of x is here. And this would be my graph here starting at the point 2, 1. So the domain on this one is starting at 2 and going to infinity. Or actually, yes, it goes to the right. So 2 to infinity, the range starts at negative infinity because it's way down here and goes up to 1 on the y. Oh, and we include both of those. So these should be not parentheses. They should be brackets on them. So that's the domain and range of this new function. So when you're doing a combination Make sure that you do the inside first, multiplying next, and then adding last, adding or subtracting at the end last. This has to be last. Don't do that before you do any of the other steps. If you do the other steps a little bit out of order, these can be switched around. This should be your first step, shifting right or left. Last is always shifting up or down. Okay, so that's transformations for, we've covered all of these topics.